Thank you for watching News Now from Fox. I'm your host, Rain Augustine, and I'm currently joined with Lucy Lim. Lucy, today is the day I'm hearing NASA has a very big event ahead. Can you talk to me a little bit about the mission? I'm hearing that it's one of a kind. Yes, absolutely. So this is NASA's first asteroid sample return mission, and it's the most ambitious sample return mission since Apollo, I think, um, in terms, especially in terms of the amount of mass that we're going for and the fact that we're getting it off of the surface of another solar system body. So uh, right now, our spacecraft, the Osiris Rex spacecraft, um, is in orbit around our asteroid Bennu, um, which is a near-Earth asteroid. And today, we're going to leave that orbit, to sit, slowly descend to the surface, reach out the sample arm of the spacecraft. Sample head will make contact with the surface for just five seconds. The, a nitrogen gas bottle will discharge into the surface to cause some of that material to flow into the sample chamber. And then the spacecraft will fire its, its thrusters and get back off of the surface of the asteroid to a safe distance for, where we'll evaluate how much sample we think has been collected. Okay, so this seems like a really challenging process. <laughs> how difficult is it? It's pretty tricky. Um, so our asteroid, um, it turns out, has a lot of boulders on it. Um, and so we have to kind of dodge those boulders on the way to the surface of the asteroid to collect our sample. Um, so the asteroid is kind of the size of a, so, sorry, the spacecraft is kind of the size of a van. And the spot on the asteroid that we're aiming for is kind of the size of a few parking spaces. Um, and so that's not normally very tricky on Earth when you're driving the van, but doing it for millions of miles away and in three dimensions does def um, definitely make it a much trickier problem. Now, how long has NASA been preparing for this mission? Oh gosh, quite a long time. And so the spacecraft was designed and built and then it was launched in 2016 out of Cape Canaveral, a uh, beautiful launch. Um, and then it took a couple of years to um, including an Earth Moon flyby to cruise to the asteroid. Um, the spacecraft arrived at the asteroid late in 2018. Um, and then we spent, you know, more than a year carefully mapping the asteroid to determine like the safest um, and best place to sa sample on the asteroid. And we learned a lot about it scientifically on the way too. It was really exciting. Yeah. So a lot of preparation has gone into this. So what happens if you cannot get a sample today? What are the other options? Yeah, we are prepared for that. Um, so, you know, first of all, the spacecraft will be taking imaging all the way down so that based on those images, if, if it detects that it's off course or, you know, headed for a giant boulder or something, it, it can trigger an abort and back away right away from the asteroid. So that's definitely one way um, that we might not contact the surface today. Um, or if we did contact the surface, but it turned out that something went wrong and we didn't quite get sample in the chamber, um, we're, we're prepared to return to the asteroid in that case as well. Um, so we have contingency planning laid out um, through another sampling attempt in December, just you know, either at the same site or in a backup um, site that we've identified, depending on exactly how things went, you know, could have gone wrong. Um, and we have extra gas bottles on the arm um, to, uh, to support additional attempts as well. Okay. So you mentioned that you've learned a lot from this project. What exactly has NASA learned from this mission? Yeah, um, I mean, there we um, we don't think that Bennu is capable of supporting life on Bennu, but we think it is telling us about the chemistry that um, you know, pr you know, to prepare for the origin of life. So that there there are molecules on Bennu. We think it will confirm it when the sample comes back to Earth um, that are related. To you know, some some of the same molecules that are used by life, you know, to to conduct bi biological processes. So Bennu seems to have carbon some carbon bearing compounds that are are, are the same as used that um, you find in biological systems, um, and they, they they can definitely form naturally. And um, and we think that's and I think the question is how widespread and complex that chemistry got in the early solar system you know, four and a half billion years ago while the planets were just getting started, um, how much of that chemistry could happen out in space during that, those very early stages. And there are also, there's also water incorporated into the rocks of Bennu. Like when Bennu was forming, uh, um, those rocks interacted with water um, and incorporated the water into the structure of the rocks at that time. And we're gonna learn about that too. Awesome, very complex thought process. I can barely wrap my mind around it. So people who are interested, where can they watch? Where can they find out more information? Yeah, well, the, um, 
the NASA TV will be covering the um, sampling event starting, I think, at 5 p.m. Eastern and going till 6.30. And if you don't have NASA TV on your cable or satellite, you can still get it streamed from the NASA.gov website. Um, there will also the, 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 there's also a Twitter account for the mission that will start tweeting much earlier in the afternoon at the beginning of the orbit departure maneuver. Um, so if you want to follow the whole process, you'll get a, like a play-by-play -play update from Twitter account um, before, you know, in advance of the NASA TV event. Thank you so much, Lucy. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Um, just how exciting, you know, our uh, our journey at this asteroid has been and how much, um, you know, and how exciting asteroid science is like, you know, um, learning about, you know, the, you know how, how these ro rocks, which are made out of really ancient materials from before the formation of the Earth and Moon, like how they behave in space and what's in them and, um, you know, what they're, what happens when you touch one is what we're going to find out today. It's, it's going to be 